Network Rail receives complaints from across the network about long waiting times at level crossings. On Wessex route alone, we had over 200 reported issues or complaints via our helpline in the last 12 months. Why do we wait so long? Why do barriers come down so long before a train arrives at a crossing? Why don't the barriers get raised in between trains? There was plenty of time. Why does that level crossing down the road take half the time? In this short film, we explain some of the reasons why level crossings are lifesavers and not time wasters. Waiting at level crossings can be frustrating. You're in a hurry. You groan as you see the barriers come down in front of you. But there's a very good reason why, and that's to keep you safe. In the UK, there are strict operational guidelines that make sure that vehicles and trains never meet. So a full barrier crossing offers our highest level of protection to make sure this happens. But why does it take so long? We get an awful lot of complaints about level crossing delays. Take the Richmond line, for example. Between Barnes and Richmond, just 2.5 miles apart, we have four level crossings to operate and there are over 300 trains a day using this line. In order to ensure a train gets to its destination on time, a train driver wants to be seeing green signals all the time. If the driver is seeing a mix of yellow or double yellow aspect signals instead, it tells them there might be a problem. So they're going to slow down and that may well cause a delay to the train. A delay to one train on a busy line can have a huge knock-on effect to other trains on the network and that's why a level crossing can sometimes be closed for a longer time than usual. Safety is our prime concern. On a level crossing with CCTV, when a train approaches, the signaller starts the road traffic light sequence, lowers the barriers and then thoroughly checks that the crossing is completely clear and no people are trapped. Only then will the signaller press a crossing clear button. This clears a protecting signal to tell approaching trains that it's safe to pass over the crossing. Every full barriered level crossing has a protecting signal on each line to stop trains passing when the barriers are still in the air. The signals are placed far enough away to allow enough distance for a fast train to stop before reaching the crossing. Trains often weigh 400 tonnes, as much as 80 elephants, so they need a considerable distance to stop. In an emergency, if the driver brakes too hard, the steel wheels could lose traction on the steel rails and the driver won't be able to control the slowing train. The protecting signals cover all these safety issues. Only after the level crossing barriers are down and the signaller has pressed the crossing clear button and the protecting signal has turned from red to yellow, will the train be allowed to approach the crossing. Meanwhile, people and vehicles have watched the barriers close, but they're still waiting for the train to pass through. That's because it takes time for the train to travel the distance from the protecting signal to the crossing. And when the trains are approaching on each line, the barriers must stay down longer to allow both trains to pass through. It's unsafe to raise the barriers for a short time in between, as we know it can lead to an increase in level crossing misuse, either deliberate or accidental. Keeping people separate from trains is clearly a good idea. Fortunately, there are signalers operating barriers like this one that make sure that happens. We recognise that most members of the public behave in a responsible way and obey the lights and instructions. But what if the frustration of waiting is too much and someone is tempted to beat the barriers? What starts as a split-second decision can result in a serious incident. The barriers are designed to flex a little, but too much pressure and they will snap off. Not only will the signaller see this, but an emergency alarm will sound, so the signaller will bring the trains to a halt. This can cause major disruptions to train services and also close the road off for a period of time. What if someone is on foot or on a bicycle? They may not have seen the lights or heard the alarms, or they may just be trying to beat them. The watching signaller will delay the lowering barriers, allowing them to safely exit. All these incidents with vehicles and people, even the near misses, still have the potential to delay trains as the signaller may have to slow the approaching trains. Finally, if someone has been waiting for a while and then decides to jump the lowered barriers, then they take matters into their own hands. 
Now the train is approaching and the results can be disastrous. If you would like to find out more, please call 03457 114141, visit our website or follow us on Twitter or Instagram.